this is certainly a very interesting presentation and a difficult one when we talk about the presentation of a patient with a thrombotic microangiopathy in pregnancy. And it really pulls into a lot of potential, you know, not conflicting, but differential diagnosis that are going to drive the care in a different direction potentially. And, and Dr. Scala, you have certainly some expertise in pregnancy associated teammates. What are your thoughts on this, the presentation and differentiating what might be TTP from other pregnancy complications? Thank you, Spiro. Of course, it's easy in hindsight. But in hindsight, if we look at the parameters in this particular patient, she did not have liver abnormalities, but she had a very high LDH, which is quite specific for TMAs. In pregnancy, the LDH follows the non-pregnant lady or gentleman. Um, the platelets were much lower than one would expect. The renal function was essentially normal. Um, you can have hypertension, but on balance, these parameters, these lab parameters would be in keeping with a diagnosis of TTP. And it would be beneficial to check an ADAMPS 13 and start instituting treatment. Thank you, Marie. I mean, Dr. Nielsen, what are your thoughts? Because you'll get pulled into these situations very, very quickly because of the potential need for plasma exchange therapy and differentiate it should you start it. As an apheresis physician and as a blood banker, I always appreciate being called early whenever uh, TTP is part of a differential diagnosis because whatever we can do to help expedite the initiation of therapy, be it plasma exchange, uh, acquiring the plasma, so on and so forth, can really help um, influence the timeliness of therapies that are delivered for uh, ITTP. So whenever uh, advanced warning is possible, that's much, much appreciated because then we can uh, mitigate any potential delays that then can have a deleterious effect on the clinical outcome for these cases. Mm -hmm.